Tages. Dune. Book Club. Episode 2. Perverted Piter Presents Plans. Welcome to Peppers and Glowworms, a channel dedicated to hot chili peppers and coldly glowing glowworms. <coughs> The second chapter of the original Dune novel has three protagonists. First, the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, then his assassin mentor Peter de Vries, and his nephew Fate Rautha Harkonnen. The chapter has basically two parts. The first one is just a bickering between the mentor and the Baron, which is a rather entertaining, although Fate is somewhat annoyed with it. Uh, seems to happen all the time that they just bicker around. And the second part is when Peter explains the plans within plans within plans. Uh, how to bring down the Atreides. Yeah, I guess I should describe the protagonists uh, a bit more, since they show up for the first time in the book. The Baron is only dramatically revealed at the end of the chapter. Before, it's only referred to his basso voice. And I guess his fat fingers with many rings on them as he spins a globe of Arrakis, a model, very decadent with jewels and so on. And then for the rest of the chapter he's not really described at all. But, as I said, at the, at the end of the chapter he steps out of the shadows and is dramatically revealed and he's grossly and immensely fat and it's described that There are some subtle bulges beneath the folds of his dark robes and that's where those uh, suspensors are harnessed to his flesh and contrary to all adaptations to the screen, I think, he's not a flying fat man. He just takes the weight from his legs with those suspensors and it says here that he weighs 200 standard kilos. I guess uh, that's... Mm, well probably realistically wouldn't be related to our kilograms, but uh, let's just assume that it's about the same 200 kilograms. That's uh, a chunky boy. But with those suspensors he uh, only weighs or would carry no more than 50 kilograms. So it takes a considerable amount of the weight from his legs. And I'm not sure if it's described later in the book, but uh, he moves about with uh, the grace of a dancer, basically. And that's something that's, uh, I think, even more creepy than uh, <laughs> this uh, silly flying fat man. It's just these swollen, really, really more than just obese, morbidly obese barren person dancing around. I think as if you wouldn't really weigh that much, even less than I weigh, uh, basically. Yeah, that's uh, that's somewhat creepy. So, the Baron, not a flying fat man. There's a, a rather enjoyable rant on Lost in Adaptation, where it goes into more detail why that he's not a flying fat man, he's uh, something else. And of course, uh, Piter is also described. Oh, let's, let's uh, ch uh, do a Fate Rautha Harkonnen first. Um, he's a dark-haired youth about 16 years old, has a round face and sullen eyes. And he's mm, just present in the chapter, listening to the two other persons, has some thoughts that he's annoyed by their bickering. And in the end, uh, when the plan is about to reveal to them, he's, uh, to him, he's uh, excited that, uh, yeah, I'm, now I'm getting the info and I guess I'm now considered really um, the hero of um, the Baron. The Nabaron, uh, a Nabaron as it uh, is called in Dune terms. But what else do we have? There's a little bit of description that uh, the, the nephew of the Baron, Fedrautha Harkonnen, uh, has a full and pouting lips, which is supposed to be a Harkonnen genetic marker. But that's about it for Fate. And, of course, the centerpiece of the chapter Piter. He's described as slender, short and with an effeminate face. His voice is uh, described as a, a tenor with a sweet musical quality. Mm -hmm. And one thing that is different from the role as it is 
shown in uh, the David Lynch adaptation, which uh, tends to uh, be mostly uh, identical with what's uh, what I see in my mind when I read about Peter, when I imagine him. The key difference is that his eyes do not have any white in them at all. They are blue within blue, the, um, as it is later described, or maybe just in the appendix, uh, the eyes of Ibat, uh, which is a sign of excessive uh, spice or melange consume, which turns the eyes this blue within blue. It's uh, mostly uh, in the adaptation, it's it's a glowy blue, but it's, it's um, in the uh, novels it's just a really dark blue that the eyes may even uh, appear black if it's really 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 excessive uh, spice consume and he seems to take some other drugs like the uh, semuta or verite and uh, that's something the baron asks in this chapter yeah he's a interesting character consumes too much spice eats it like candy look at his eyes he might have come directly from the arakeen labor pool efficient but he's still emotional and prone to passionate outbursts, as the Baron says. And later on he describes them, compares them to machines of old. He explains to fate, this is a mentored fate. It has been trained and conditioned to perform certain duties. The fact that it's encased in a human body, however, must not be overlooked. A serious drawback that. I sometimes think the ancients with their thinking machines had the right idea. Oh my, a Baron, and that's rather heretical. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, heresy alert. <laughs> that's uh, more related to a different franchise, but uh, anyway. Yeah, he's a little bit uh, uh, effed up in the head. It's not described in this chapter, but he is a twisted mentat and he's a. Uh, basically a product that uh, was sold. It's not really gone into detail uh, when the Baron considers r replacing him and they talk about it. Peter inquires where he would find a comparable mentat and the Baron explains the same place you found me. And that's uh, basically all, but um, he is the product of my favorite faction in the Dune uh, universe, but it's not refer to by name yet and so I will not talk about it at this point. Yeah, so now I have gone more into detail about Peter, but let's uh, go through the chapter and have a more in-depth look at the l funny little bickering that's uh, happening between the Baron and his mentored assassin. The actual quote that I have decided to represent this chapter is Do not toy with Peter, Baron. When I started rereading this chapter I thought I would have more to say and there would be more world building and more factions and so on mentioned for the first time but less than I remembered. I also rem remembered a uh, thought that I would remember that the Baron was talking all the time and presenting this but I guess it all gets mixed up with the different versions and adaptations and it's uh, mostly a chapter where uh, it is, you could say it's the Peter show uh, because Peter is uh, very much the center of this chapter and he's one of my favorite characters in uh, the Dune franchise I think although he shows up only in the first novel and then he dies and does not come back although uh, no uh, in, the, in the prequels he's also uh, I guess but uh, let's not uh, think about them right now if I'm referring to the classic Frank Herbert novels then uh, he's only there for a short time but all the more enjoyable he's uh, a, an entertaining character and of course in my mind he's always played by Brett Dourif this actor seems to elevate the things that he plays. He was very nice as this uh, murderous ensign on Star Trek Voyager, uh, Ensign Suda, this uh, betazoid that uh, had some violent tendencies. <laughs> and of course he was in the uh, David Lynch adaptation of Dune. He uh, was much less crazy than in the original novel there and the Harkonnens were uh, all the more crazy <laughs> to balance it out, I guess. 
but he was he was very entertaining there and of course in my somewhat uh, at this point still beloved uh, alien franchise he was also nice as this crazy scientist giddy man uh, when he had his final speech uh, about butterflies and uh, always a bit over the top i guess but uh, it's it's uh, really nice and of course uh, in german the uh, child's play franchise uh, is called uh, chucky the murder puppe <laughs> Uh, Chucky the Murderer's Doll, basically. And I didn't really uh, care much about this franchise, but when I found out that Brad Dourif uh, voices Chucky and I heard more of the original uh, audio, I somehow have uh, more of an appreciation for that. Uh, he he elevates uh, elevates the material he stars in. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he's a, um, a nice uh, actor. And he even made those... Uh, um, mm, mm, Awful would be too harsh, uh, but those uh, Halloween reboots uh, more tolerable with his role there, I guess. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, tangent on uh, on this actor, and in my mind, uh, Peter looks very much like he is played by Brad Dourif, but uh, with some uh, differences. Okay, then <coughs> let's have a deeper look at the Peter show. The Baron complains that he talks too much uh, for a mentor, and uh, he thinks that he must do away with that one soon. He has almost outlived his usefulness. That's. Um, uh, I will go back on that later. Um, yeah, Piter is really cocky and not very uh, respectful to his uh, boss, I guess. When right uh, before he presents the plan uh, in the face of the bickering, he says, "Is it not regrettable that you were unable to devise this delicious theme yourself?" He teases his boss quite a bit, and the Baron uh, inquires whether he, ha he has been taking verite or semuta. A verite is a drug that um, um, makes you say the truth, I guess, and uh, semuta is something else that. Uh, g gives you a trance when certain kind of uh, music plays. But uh, Peter replies that a, a truth without fear surprises the Baron. And he is indeed uh, somewhat fearless, because he explains that uh, he knows that the Baron will only send the ex executioner when it's he has totally outlived his usefulness and he will not move sooner because it would be wasteful and that's why he's not afraid and he will know when the executioner comes it would be interesting to see what would happen there then but we don't get to see this as i mentioned somewhat of a spoiler maybe if you haven't read it yet uh, peter does not live very long in this book yeah and fate is annoyed by the bickering but uh, i think it's rather entertaining this bickering yeah Ah, okay. There are so many uh, great lines between the two. The Baron wonders that uh, whether uh, Peter causes pain not just out of necessity, but uh, just because he delights in it. I think it's safe to say that that's true. Even uh, later on in the bickering, the Baron theorizes that Peter might even enjoy watching the uh, Imperial troops uh, bring down um, the castle of the Baron. Peter whispers, uh, does the Baron need to ask? He's, uh, yeah, uh, living a dangerous <laughs> life, I guess, when he behaves this way towards the Baron. He's too interested in blood and pain and should have been a, a Bashar of the Corp. And when the Baron implies that Peter might not get his promised spoils of Arrakis, which is the concubine of the of the duke, um, the lady Jessica, he wants to have her, the Python. He, uh, that's when the quote of th this chapter happens, uh, do not toy with Python, Baron. He complains that he was promised the lady Jessica. And the Baron wonders, uh, says, for what Python, for pain? Mm -hmm. He doesn't answer, but he moves, or has moved somewhat uh, threateningly uh, towards uh, his nephew. Uh, a bit of tension in the air. Anyway, at one point Peter shows fear. That's when uh, it is um, pointed out that he was wrong in predicting that the Duke's concubine would bear a girl, give birth to a girl, and that did not happen as we found out in the first chapter. 
And that's uh, when he says, I'm not often wrong, Baron. And that's when, for the first time, we can hear fear in his voice. Okay, I guess we should present Peter's excellent plan and the different points that he describes. Mainly for the benefit of fate at this point, I guess. Let's go through it. And as the Baron says to fate, listen carefully. Observe the plans within plans within plans. That's a common theme in Dune. Those plans nested inside plans. Peter goes in mentat mode and describes the different um, possibilities and predictions. And at first he describes that there's only a low chance that the Atreides will just run off and flee and take their family atomics and shields with them and say bye-bye to the Imperium, because he's uh, too proud for that. Although the effect would be the same for the Harkonnens and they get rid of the Atreides, the Baron of course wants the other option, where he eradicates the Atreides himself, basically, oh, with a little help, as we shall see. So, uh, first point, um, Peter predicts that the Atreides will set up base not in uh, Kartak, uh, Kartak, uh, Kartak, let's say Kartak, where the Harkonnen set their uh, base of operation, because in Arakeen it's more easy to defend, and that's why Peter predicts that they, the Atreides will set up base there, and that's where formerly the uh, Count and Lady Fenring lived, and Count Fenring is actually... Uh, may maybe my my most favorite character in the uh, Dune series. He's strange and interesting. He's uh, in, in the top tier, certainly. Yeah, but he's only uh, mentioned by name and a little bit of mm, description, but not much. So I will get back to him later when he's really uh, when he really shows up. So a uh, second point. The Harkonnens have arranged some uh, diversions at this uh, residency that is predicted to be in Arakin, and there will be an attempt on the life of the Atreides here. And it may succeed, it has to look realistic, but of course the Baron uh, does not approve of this possibility. He wants a different outcome where, about which I do not want to think about uh, how, what he wishes to do. Yeah, uh, th this prediction is uh, true, just like the first one. The Atreides do in fact not flee, and they do in fact set up base in Arakin, and an attempt on the life of Paul Atreides does happen. It is unsuccessful, but uh, it's a close call as it should have been. And the third point is that Peter predicts that the mentor of the Atreides, uh, Thuthia Howard, will extrapolate that they, the Harkonnens have planted an agent with them. The suspect, as Peter suspects, <laughs> will be Dr. Yui, Dr. Wellington Yui. He's the physician of the Atreides and he has imperial conditioning and that means he cannot harm his patients and the conditioning cannot be removed without killing the subject. And so Peter predicts that this uh, Suk doctor cannot stay the suspect for uh, the Howard because he uh, says to himself, um, he predicts that no, the conditioning of the Suk school is not breakable, so he cannot be the traitor. But they will, as, they, as Peter says, um, drag a most interesting subject across Howard's path. And that will be the concubine of the Duke, Lady Jessica. This will mess up Puthia's functionality as a mentor, and he may even try to kill her. And again, Peter is correct, this does indeed happen. He suspects that Lady Jessica to be the traitor, and he does in fact try to kill her, which is an interesting part of the novel, which will come later. And apart from that, the Harkonnens will divert the attention of the Atreides mentor with some little uprisings and things like that. But it will die down slowly, these uh, difficulties. And they want to make the Duke believe that he's gaining a measure of sec security and that he's taking hold on Arrakis. But of course that's when the trap snaps shut. But then the twist is revealed. They have 
Two Legions of Saroka, disguised in uh, Harkonnen uniforms, not in, as in the latest uh, movie adaptations, uh, where they are clearly distinct from the Harkonnens. And the Saroka, of course, um, are the elite troops of the Padi Shah Emperor, and he's in league with the Baron, but no, 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 no one must know this. And here's a bit of world building uh, about the great houses and the Landsrat. And they would unite against the imperial house if this would uh, come out, that the emperor would do such a thing and uh, support this attempt to eradicate a rival house. Uh, he would benefit from that and so he supports the Harkonnens. Yeah, so this uh, attack with the support of uh, elite troops from the emperor does happen and it is successful. And the final point of Peter's predictions and plans is that either the duke or at least his concubine and son may try to escape, but they, the Harkonnens plan to block this off by the help of the planetary ecologists, um, the Liat Kinds, and they think he's on their side or more likely on the side of the emperor, which is in league with the Harkonnens in this case, but that's where the plan fails. That does not happen and that's how the whole things are set into motion and the plot of the book continues and happens and leads to the rise of Muad'Dib because they get past and Liat Kainz is in fact an important factor in this, how Paul and his mother escape the attack. I think One other important point is that the feud between Atreides and Harkonnen is a bit more elaborated. The Baron has made a peace offering as required. A message is brought to them in this chapter that the Duke refuses this offering and he still holds on to the vendetta between the two houses and refers to... where is it? The Art of Kenley, which is a special kind of hostility between great houses and a nice old rich tradition which um, the Duke wants to hold on to. Hmm. Yeah, the reason between this hostility is never uh, really described in the classic Dune novels, in the prequel novels by the son of Frank Herbert and another author. It's described in detail how this whole hostility came up. They were friends before those houses, but yeah, to be fair, if you set it up this much and then basically it can only be underwhelming when it is really described how the hostility came up. So you can't really blame the authors of this prequels in this, in this case, I guess. Okay, that was the Peter show. As I said, he is spot on on most predictions that he made, but uh, at one key point he is wrong and previously he was wrong about the sex of the offspring of the Atreides Duke and yeah, it's enough to be wrong on two small points and the whole plan collapses and the Harkonnens do not get what they want. Hmm. I have two more segments on my list and once again one of the segments is from other memory where I get into more detail about things that remind me of other sci-fi franchises and there was uh, not much here. The trope of send in the clones is um, somewhat implied maybe with Piter and uh, and replacement and the Baron thinks that he has to get rid of this one but uh, I think uh, the idea that uh, Piter is basically a serial product and gets discarded and a new um, a new one, a new Piter is bought, doesn't really come up in the classic Dune novels and it's a thing of those prequels. I think the prequels have contaminated my memory in this case. I will see if it's confirmed or not in the rest of the novel. At least in the prequels it was um, that Piter um, dies and is replaced with a new Piter. But I'm not sure if that's um, the case in the classic Dune novels. Um, maybe that it has only been a thing in the prequels, but we shall see. So I will not discuss this here. 
at this point of the novel. Then there's the segment of uh, where I'm asking if Paul is a Mary Sue and I will list all his titles and abilities and there's nothing in this chapter. Uh, <laughs> the only ability that is mentioned is uh, being born. He was born as a boy and not as a girl. That's all that is mentioned about Paul in this chapter and that the Baron would like to <laughs> have this attempt on his life unsuccessful because he has other plans with him. Yuck. That's not really made clear in this chapter what his plans are, but uh, probably not very pleasant for Paul. Yeah, and the final segment, Worm Signs. Uh, how many times did the great sandworms of Dune or any of their life stages, sand trout, sand plankton, mentioned by name? And once again, <coughs> zero. I do not get to consume any chili peppers, hot sauce, chili powder or anything uh, which I in imitation of drinking games I have vowed to consume a little spicy bit for every time these great sandworms are mentioned by name but uh, again zero nothing so no spicy little snack for me in this video okay that's it and I will maybe see you hear you You will hear me again in the video about chapter 3. Goodbye.